On today's High Watt Soundbite, we're getting scientific on the rhythm section. Well, there's no question the foundation for a great sounding mix every time is going to start with a solid and well-balanced rhythm section. Whether we're talking about 85 BPM or 129. or something right in the middle like our Ogre collab. Or just plain weird. Yeah, it really doesn't matter what genre of music we're talking about. The rhythm section plays a critical role in any mix. Traditionally, I've always thought of the rhythm section as that four-piece band out on the floor cutting bed tracks, you know? Drums, bass, rhythm guitar, and maybe a keyboard. Well, in electronic music, I often refer to the rhythm section as just the drums and bass. This is a critically important aspect of what we get up to. And in my own experience, when you've got a solid, really solid rhythm section, you can get away with doing just about everything in a mix. This is a critical area that I dedicate a lot of my time and resources when I'm doing a mix. And so for today's session, I wanna break down these examples a little bit and share some of the technique that I get up to in designing a killer sounding rhythm section. Now, this is one area of my mix that's all about the details, where I almost get scientific about it. So in this first example, this is just a relentless groove at 85 BPM. Check it. Yeah, awesome groove made up of a bunch of drum loops. Now, just like many of you, I use so many drum loops in my everyday music production, but one common issue that I have in working with drum loops and I know some of you are gonna relate, is that I just never have enough oomph in the end. In that final mix, I'm always looking for more oomph, for more kick and more snare a lot of times. So more often than not, when I'm working with loops, and you've seen me talk about this in past sessions, I am always accentuating certain elements of those loops. And for me to put together a track that's made up of loops and not add like one or two extra kicks is rare. I mean, that's never gonna happen. So a very common practice for me when I'm working with loops is to almost put my scientist jacket on and take a microscopic look at those loops in an effort to make them punch. 99 times out of 100, I'm adding samples. Just for reference, let's listen to the tracks that the band sent me on this particular mix. Well, I simply added an extra kick, snare, and crash to this thing. Changes it a lot. Check out the vibe of this. Classic example of what I get up to all the time. Let me just turn all the drum loops off and just listen to the tracks that I'm adding to this. Very simple additions to those drum loops, but what a difference they make in the big picture. Yeah, 
I love taking the rhythm section and turning it into a science experiment where I just get really into the details. Let me draw up another example. This track is based entirely around this main drum loop. Check it. I think that's just a straight stylus loop if I'm not mistaken. Well, I just went and accentuated that loop with all of these extra drums. Check it. A substantially more oomph to that main loop by going in and accentuating and adding these extra drums, right? But if you're gonna do this and, and go into drum loops and start accentuating and adding and layering samples, you have to become an expert at phase adjustment and listening to those samples and how they react to one another. This is a perfect example where I'm gonna take all of the samples off except the two main kicks that I added to this loop. Check them out. Let's hear them individually. Very different sounding kick drums. When we combine them, well, just for the experiment in science, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the first couple of bars of one of these two kick drums, and I'm gonna go ahead and shift that audio just a couple of milliseconds. Listen to what happens to the sound. I'll start playing back where they're all locked up and then I'll just shift. Listen to this. Well, this is where the science comes in. I mean, I've just taken one of those two kicks and shifted it by just two milliseconds and it totally changed the kick drum sound. If you're gonna go and start layering multiple samples, particularly bottom end samples like kick drums, like I say, you have to become an expert at phase shifting. Now I'm talking about detail where I'm going down and grabbing a region of something like a kick drum and I'm going down to the sample accurate level and shifting those kicks and moving those drums around by samples. Yeah, in my own experience, this kind of micro shift of phase will make or break your mix. If you're paying attention to this, oh yeah, you could dial in a killer sounding rhythm section. But if you're not, you can destroy your mix so quickly by throwing up a bunch of random samples and not paying attention to the phase relationship of those multiple samples playing together. I strongly encourage you to give this a try. I believe that you'll probably stop reaching for equalizers as much as you currently do, and you'll start to use this micro phase relationship to your advantage. Well, let's dial up another example. Here's the rhythm section of our recent Ogre collab. Check it. Yeah, I love that rhythm section. That all starts with Boris's main loops. So all I did here was just accentuate what Boris has in his loop. I wanted more kick drum. I wanted a snare that was gonna jump out on top of the mix. And I absolutely wanted more oomph, more bottom. So I simply added a bass note and a couple of other samples to enhance the thing. Check it. Very uncomplicated, right? Check them out on their own. So simple, but on top of what Boris is doing, totally makes sense. The very same thing goes with the loop itself. When you start to add an individual kick to the main part of body of a loop, you've gotta pay attention to that phase relationship and use it to your advantage when you can. This is gonna be a game changer, I promise you. Another solid rhythm section.
awesome example of what I was talking about earlier, where when you take the time to set up a solid rhythm section, you can get away with doing almost anything to that mix. You can bring sounds in and pan them hard left and right, literally have things jump out of the speakers. You can turn your mix upside down, but it will always land right back up on its feet if you've got that solid rhythm section holding it together. Well, thank you very much for sitting in on today's session. And the next time you're working on a rhythm section, oh yeah, I encourage you to get scientific about it. <laughs>